Five minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, first off, uh, I just want to thank uh, Deputy Joe Higgins for an excellent motion. Uh, I'll be uh, supporting it. Um, the uh, 1913 uh, lockout period achieved uh, something massive. It established the fact that ordinary people have power if they wish to flex that particular muscle. And they still do, and it's something people should remember. It also established the fact that the media if let get too powerful and if left unchecked can act as an instrument that destroys democracy and people's right to choose their own leaders. The same muscle that was used by unions over the decades to varying degrees of success became atrophied during the so-called Celtic Tiger period or era or disaster or whatever word you want to use at the end of that. When the need uh, to flex this muscle again uh, was required uh, with the eclipse of the economy. Unfortunately, that muscle had become limp, a bit like uh, an arm after you take it out of plaster in Paris. It just didn't seem to be ready, and it should have been ready. So I suppose one of the reasons we're sort of told why they didn't do the radical things that they were meant to and they were mandated to do is that uh, they were, I suppose, seen by people as too risky, like the idea of a mortgage strike, which they were mandated to do uh, at an ICTU conference, but uh, uh, I suppose it was seen as too risky. Well, the people in 1913 took much bigger risks than the idea that uh, they might lose maybe the right to go to the cinema for a month or whatever. They lost their food out of their mouths and uh, they left behind a legacy, but they went through hellish pain for it, and I suppose some people would say they didn't win it in the end, but they established something. And, uh, but the most important thing to remember was that to change things, sometimes you have to go through serious pain and take risks. Now, I suppose you could be critical of a lot of the unions, and you can be very critical of them, I would, uh, because uh, uh, unions have the ability and, and the people power uh, to change things if they so wish. And credit to the INMO, uh, they showed a little bit of resolve, in my opinion, uh, above many unions uh, since uh, our economy originally collapsed those few years ago. Their motion for a mortgage strike in 2011, uh, which passed uh, their own union and was brought to ICTU, uh, was an opportunity to uh, look at, I suppose, workers' rights from a different angle, not just from the point of view of what money was coming in, but also what money was going out through massive debt. And their idea, if it had been followed through on, would have actually saved us an awful lot of hardship because we're going to end up in this big hole anyway where we're going to have to make massive decisions like this. But if unions had used their firepower and been brave like those people a hundred years ago, then we wouldn't be in the hole that we're in now. And we are in a hole because no matter what way you try and dress it up, now there's a new lockout. There's a lockout of people from basic services because this banking debt that wasn't fought by potentially hundreds of thousands of people could have been mobilized very easily, you know, a lot more than I suppose anyone uh, in the opposition could have done it because they have these people as members but they didn't act on it and people would have had more money in their pockets. People wouldn't be paying the crazy mortgages they are, uh, that they are now. We would have fought the ECB because at least the government could have went off and said, look it, it isn't us that's doing it, it's those terrible people, they're forcing it on, it, it on us, and uh, you need to write down the debt. But that wasn't done. It can still be done, because it has to be done. And it's sad, like, that Really, when you think of the power that these unions still have, if they want to flex those muscles, that a little group growing all the time, like Bally Hay, have more of an impact, and they're still not giving up. Why don't they show a bit of bravery, the union leaders, now? Is it that they're too comfortable? You'd have to suggest that it is. Because surely your ideals can't change that much from going from pegging stones at pickets to being a union leader who doesn't give a damn anymore. So, please, I think people need to learn something from what happened back then. And the big thing they need to learn is there are times 
when you've got to take a risk. And these unions, really, what risk are you taking anymore? Because people are going through hell. Thank now you, things are so bad that you can't even get into our mental hospitals when you're you. on the verge of suicide. Thank I you, was Deputy. told, go away. I now call on Deputy Matthew McGrath. Good morning, good um, I too am delighted to be able to speak to this motion tonight. I want to say at the outset that I'm not supporting it and I don't agree with most of it. A very selective